What's up, y'all? Today we got a different kind of video. I'm finally about to build a gaming PC. This has been in the works for a while. I've been meaning to do it. But unlike most of my videos, I actually don't know what I'm doing. So this ain't going to be a tutorial. More like a vlog. I teach you what I learned as I go. But let's see how this come out. So today we starting with an entry level build, you know. Ryzen 5 5600X for the CPU. AMD RX 7600 for the GPU. A micro ATX board. 27 inch, 220 hertz monitor. 1440p of course. 32 gigs of RAM coming. And two terabytes of internal storage. And yeah, we're gonna see how this all play out. First thing first, we're gonna kick it off with the motherboard. I'm gonna do a kind of small build this time. I, something compact, doesn't take up too much space. You know, we got a Wi-Fi antenna, and here goes our board. You know, AMD CPU socket. Let's get that open. Let's get this CPU open. Comes with its own little cooler. Pretty cool. So I gotta get this chip into this slot. And number one thing I need to worry about is not to bend these little gold prongs inside. I'll show you what I mean. So there goes the CPU. As you see, there's all of these little gold, uh, gold tips. And I need to place that into here. Now, the first thing I need to look for is there's a divot on here. You see at this top bottom left corner, that one needs to line up with a divot on this board to show me what direction it all goes. Okay, now that I have it all aligned, the rule is you put it on, but you don't press down. You just let it naturally fall in. Then you clasp it back down. Next step is to always put the cooler on, or at least make the cooler connection. So in this case, I don't have like a big water cool kit. Instead, I have like this little radiator fan. Comes with this specific kit, so you don't have to buy an extra one. But one thing to note, on the bottom, there's this thermal paste. It sticks between this and the CPU. Do not touch this with your hands. Now, before I put these on, I need to first remove these case holder screws. There's four of them, and they're gonna line up with these four screws on this CPU cooler. Let's kick that off. Now we can place the CPU cooler. I'm gonna make sure that all of these line up together. So now that I have them all lined up in the standoffs, I'm gonna go around the same way you would do a car tire and only tighten a little bit at a time. At some point, you're gonna hit where they don't wanna turn anymore. That's as tight as you need to go. Don't over tighten it. But the next step is to immediately connect to the CPU fan. So all of these motherboards, they have writing on them to at least tell you where to connect. If you, you can see right here, it says CPU fan. You see it's a four prong connector. Slide that right in and cool. We got the CPU connected to his fan. Next up, we're gonna put in the memory sticks. According to the manual, memory sticks should go into slots two and four. If you look, there's a little crevice in there, one size longer than the other. So this is supposed to be a perfect fit between this crevice and this one. Pop these open. Okay, okay, that's kind of cool. So it's pressed down evenly on both sides, these should click. And the next one we should put in is the solid state storage. Gotta take this screw out first. Slides in real easy, same thing like the memory stick. You can see the a specific divot. What's this in? Press down, then I'm gonna put the screw right back on top of that. So our next step, we gotta get this inside of my case. <laughs> I like that. So we got glass on the side and the front, plus a few in outs, power, headphone, USB, USB-C. Okay, so I got the glass off. And I got the screws that they're hitting. Now I need to line up these standoffs with the layout of this board. See these silver holes? I wanna move any standoffs I need to move to match this shape. Then I'm gonna use the screws to screw the motherboard in. Okay, so it turns out I was short too. I need one right here. I think one right here, but it's cool because all of these cases, oop, they come with these little standoffs. These standoffs are what's gonna hold the motherboard. Okay, as I line up the motherboard. Okay, so I got all the little screws in. This is the final one. Okay, now our motherboard is correctly seated to the case. You can see the in and out portion. Fits perfectly lined up. I think I want to tackle these wires nuts. This is going to be kind of hard because, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm new to this. But as I said before, it's usually some type of wording to let you know what connects to what. Basically, these wires right here control this fan. These control this fan. And I also need to uh, put together the power supply. Uh, damn, you feel so thirsty, girl. I see where most of the weight of the computer come from. I'm sliding the PSU in from the side. I'm then gonna screw it in with the screws they gave me. Uh, the case has all these grommets, so you can just feed wires to them. So this is the main power. If you look on the other side, there's a huge clip that that one goes into. So let's put that in. 
So we have an eight prong for the CPU. If you look on this side, right there, right towards the top of the motherboard, that's the eight prong CPU. Apparently the small one. So it's gonna go into one that says system fan. That's system fan one. What confused me was it has four prongs, but this one has three. Found out if you just slide in this chamfer with this slide, it's cool. And if you're missing that fourth pin, that just means you can't control the speed of the fan. It's always gonna blow, I guess at maximum. It's cool, we can upgrade that later. I don't know if I mentioned, this case has RBG fans. So since this is an RBG fan, it has this connector, which is for RGB. So as I said before, the motherboard has words on it. It says D, L, L, U, D. See, it's a three prong. You see, this one is a three prong receptor. So we're gonna plug that into there put on this side. I'm not gonna lie, wiring up these fans and these LEDs was annoying. They sent some adapters that I forgot about to link them all together. So on the front, everything looks clean. Like you really don't see any wires hanging around and they all go out pretty much through the same grommets. Okay, so this case has USB-C, normal USB and a headphone jack. So these now have to go back into the case and come around. When we look across the bottom, there are connections for all of these. So, so the microphone says HD audio on it. When you come down here in the bottom left, it says audio. As you see, it's a weird nine pin connector that matches the HD audio one. USB hub, says USB 3.4. I'm gonna run that through. Okay, unfortunately I didn't think ahead. There's no connector, no way to connect this USB-C port to this motherboard. So this USB-C port is now used as Sony. But the only last thing is a uh, LED switch power. So if you look, I have power LED and power. You can find that down here. You're gonna see power LED, positive, negative, and power positive and negative. It's letting you know that it's at the top two rows. Okay, y'all, let's do a recap. I got my CPU in and it's cooler. I got my memory sticks in. I got my motherboard in. I got all my connections to the power supply. I got the power supply in. I think last but not least, it's time to get that GPU busting. Oh, that's nice. So to get this in, I have to connect to this PCIe slot. So at the measuring, it looks like I'm gonna have to pop out slot two and three. Okay, so in this case, once you unscrew them, they just pop right out. Okay, I've got my graphics card ready. Peel all this plastic off. There's one little cover. Take out the PCE port. And that's gonna slide right into the same way like we did with the memory sticks while also sliding into this. Okay, that slid right in. That was easy, super easy. Now I just gotta screw these two down. All right, y'all, connection ran, we done. I just gotta pick it up, clean up the wires in the back, and then put the glass back on. Wi-Fi antenna goes to these two gold cables. Connect this. I feel like I'm unveiling a masterpiece. All right, y'all, let's try to get this to boot up so you can really see it. Okay, so we got the monitor hooked up, the temporary keyboard and mouse. This is hooked up. One last thing, you've got to have a copy of Windows 10 or 11 on the USB drive, and it needs to be plugged into the motherboard before you boot this up for the very first time. Also remember that the monitor goes into the graphics card, not the motherboard, the graphics card. And we're gonna cross our fingers and hope this boot up. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cool, so I got here with this boot screen. Here we go, installing Windows. Boom. We did it y'all. We built a gaming PC. Like literally go in and check for updates. You're gonna get all these updates through Windows, right? As soon as that's done, and look up whoever made your graphics card. Mine was made by Gigabyte, and look for the Gigabyte software, and download it. It give you access to stuff to like change the fan color, blah, blah, blah. But what's important is you come down here to these updates, and you got drivers and stuff that need updating. Had to get the Fortnite booming. It's a dub. Took long enough. It's another one. Nah, man, three times in a row is crazy. Oh uh, yeah, this gaming PC was a great investment. They gave me the Avatar game, man. I'm at 1080p, matched out settings. This thing is impressive. Uh, I've never experienced more than 60 frames in a single player game. This is crazy. 
I got a Hitman demo running. Everything masked out 1080p. Look at that frame rate, 170 frames. All right, y'all, so it's been a couple of days, and if you've ever been on the fence of building a PC, this is your sign to do it. I'm all in now, so much that I've even cleaned up our second room and turned into a personal gaming station. So far, I'm really impressed with how this performs. At 1080p, high settings in almost every game. So if you enjoyed the video, stay tuned. There will be more. I plan on fully upgrading this PC piece by piece. In my next video, I'm going to try to water cool this CPU. I'm also considering doing a guide video to teach people how to pick out what parts they want for their build. If you're interested in that, let me know. But yeah, everyone, thanks for watching. This was an unusual video for this page, but I got to say, man, I really enjoyed it. And as usual, if you learn something or you laugh, like and subscribe.